All right, it's nice to have you once more. And if you just joined in, this is still Enterprise Morning right here on Enterprise Television. Let's move to our main conversation for today. Nigeria's military high command says protesters waving Russian flags have crossed a red line. It also announced that it is investigating those instigating this action and will take serious action against them. Very true. Meanwhile, in response to growing unrest, protests in Kaduna and Zaria, the Kaduna State Security Council has imposed a 24-hour curfew in both cities. The protests are driven by demands for better governance and an end to perceived ineffective leadership. Moving on, despite some areas returning to normal, many youth continue to demonstrate Governor Obasani and the Security Council decided on the curfew to restore order. The citizens are urged to stay indoors while the security forces address the situation with ongoing monitoring to adjust the curfew is needed. And let's quickly investigate this subject. All right, so just to investigate this subject, just like we did uh, here, uh, we still have in the studio suite also about the Vance Feli and the Cyril Abaco. Thank you so very much, gentlemen, yeah, yeah. for hanging around. Now, before we get into the crux of the matter here, I would love you to listen to um, uh, a reportage that was done by, by Reuters, and it says Russia's growing footprint in Africa. It reads, African governments have increasingly welcomed economic, diplomatic, and security ties with Russia, leading Western countries to denounce what they see as Moscow's destabilizing influence and seek their own more equal partnerships. With what we see going on in Kaduna, in Kano, and all the parts of the country, do you think there is a footprint of Russia in Nigeria? Cyril Abaku. Uh. The writer's report, yes, I understand what, where writer's is going. But this morning, I just opened an interview granted by Professor Bola Akintarima, who was former director general of the NIIE, uh, Nigerian Academy of International Affairs at the end. He said that, from what he could tell, those protesters in Kano were not even Nigerians. Mm. They are from Niger. That's Professor Akintarima's report. Alleged. Well, so to say. But I think that we're creating a ferment for an appearance of something that I believe the protesters want to give back to something else. Now, uh, we've seen Mali, we've seen Burkina Faso, we've seen Niger, we've seen Chad. The pattern is all too familiar. All those countries were traditionally Francophone countries. France was their, was their mother, as it were. Their foreign policy was basically French. Uh, but then, with the coups coming one on the back of the other, you know, if you look at the map, the landlocked countries, mm -hmm. now, they've not started going to the coastal West African countries, but the landlocked countries have likely been taken. And maybe the man looking at us each other in Egypt. Yes, the next country is Nigeria, which shares its red border mm -hmm. with Niger. And when President Bola Tinimu last year, was it last year, he came out smoking and said, we're going to invade Niger. We're going to do this, uh, do, double down on them. Through their cars. Through their cars. We're not going to allow them. The Niger, the, not, not just Niger, Nigeria's north, northern Nigeria, was very unhappy with him. In fact, they told him that an attack on Niger is an attack on the north. So the president quickly uh, took, took his hands off to avoid any political backlash. Now, we enter the new, the end governance, bad governance protests, which have, um, which, frankly speaking, I don't think we've had a protest of this kind in our history. Really? We have really haven't had. What was the difference? Look, the point is this. NSAS, they are not opposed NSAS. Northern youths came out and said that this was an attempt to topple Buhari's government. They opposed it. Mm. In fact, when uh, Buhari sat with them, uh, the police IG or commander of the NSAS, and pilots, they said, I saw, they said they had investigated him and that he, like, that he was going to be a good commander. So when that the president announced within hours, Northern youth came out and said that they know the man that he, they were going to do a good job. They, they, even the president's own attitude towards answers looks like Chairman Ali was in the protest. Let them kill themselves. Yeah. Mm. Why was, 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 was Aloof? Why to beg him for the nation? Because if he had done that before the protest, he would have gotten that back. He did it. Because he knew that this was probably a, a certain affair. 
Now, he, and you know, even the governor of Samuel said that the president of the has has better. That's not the president of Gary. The, when, I mean, so just went to the panel the, the, the and said it was Governor Saul who called them to intervene. Because Abuja turned it back on Lagos. It what was a clear national affair. That is on the one hand. On the other hand, June 12th, I have, I have friends, people who were protesting in Lagos and they took them to the north. And policemen told them in the police station that these people are the ones who want to take Nigeria from us. June 12, 1993. Do you know that in, even in the South, people thought it was a Yoruba affair? Yeah, very true. Good. But for, uh, during the, Niger the defense, pro the defense part protest of 1962, Nigerian students, Professor Bia Jenny Franco, it was more like students of, of UIA battle. Mm. Yeah, yes. And don't witness of the Lama protest we have had. This is the first time, even if somebody may say the North is only fighting people because it's the South and it's fine. But for the first time, people in the South, and that's why I said that this protest should give us concern because for the fact that the president is just addressing issues, even if you see that maybe in Abuja or in Lagos the protest going, you may see that you may suddenly find that in Joss or in Bauchi, you are slept up. You know why? Because there are there are issues on the ground that are not being addressed. I think we see this protest really ending. They may not end. You may just see pockets of protest here and there and it will continue. Now, the people waving flags in North in Kano, let me come to it. After the Queen, Burkina Faso, after the Queen, Mali, in fact, you know, in these schools, the Wagner report, they are, so they are helping mm -hmm. people to come to power. I think it was in Mali, mm -hmm. Dubuya. Mm -hmm. yeah, which one is that? Yeah, Wagner people, because the president turned his back on a defense pact, Russia. But the next thing happened was that the Wagner people gave intelligence to the army chief, who talked to the president. You know, so, and after each coup, they, in Burkina Faso, they stayed the coup through Wasa. Oh, it was also the stage the, 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 the school. Now, but the point is this after the coup took place, because France ideally will be supporting the democratically elected person. And because this, gen, this current generation, they really don't have the historical background of how France colonized the country, and they, 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 they don't seem like the old France. Yes. So they're looking for new visas, they're looking for new frontiers. In any case, they are, they, are, they are not democratically elected. Why should they move for France for, for, for legitimization? They just go to Russia yes, or to Russia. As a Russia coming, people are going to raise Russian flags in the, in the streets. Now, bring it home. It, bring it, yes, home. it, it happened in Mali, mm. it happened in Burkina Faso, it happened in Niger, and, then Ch and, and I think Chad. This one, it could happen in Nigeria. I'm going to recruit to happen. But this is like the, the, the person are saying we are inviting Russia to come and do what it has done in. In the neighboring countries. Okay. That's what they are doing. They are saying this flag, we know what they did in Russia, in uh, Mali, mm. we know what they did in Burkina Faso, we know what they did in. Uh, but the Russian High Commission. Uh, no, the, 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 the embassy. Yes. yes, they came out and said. No, of course, of course. That's a diplomatic thing. They, they would always come yes, out to. Yeah, that they're not involved. But the point, well, just to wrap my thoughts together, it's really, it's, it, it's sad. You know, that we found the point that Nigerians are protesting their country, waving but the, 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 country. The, the, the Russians are intelligent enough to know that this is no invitation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's no invitation. <laughs> um, people who, um, I listened to the analysis issue you talked about, that these people were actually Russians living and carrying on business in Kano. So that's a Russian. Um, Nigerians. Nigerians living and carrying on business in uh, Kano. You understand? A lot of Nigerians live in the northern part. So that mammoth North crowd North are all Nigerians. Hold on. They, these young people, they have friends who are Nigerians. They have colleagues who are Nigerians. They have allies who are Nigerians. It's a, it's a question of multiplying the flags and give everybody. But we're, not, we're not saying that all of them are Nigerians, but we're saying the influence. The influence is Niger, okay? And that to the Nigerians now, they have actually made it to the world because um, they seem to be happy with the military. They seem to be getting their need, what the, uh, democracy could not deliver to them. Mm. They seem to be getting it. How, how, however, they think that that's possible, that's true. You understand, but now this will fly, fly in these flags. That's where the influence came from. And during protests, remember, it's not a regular, normal lifestyle. Mm. 
people want to infuriate the authority. And if you gather five, six person and tell them that carry this flag, if you carry this flag, they will become very angry. The, your, your flying of this flag means your allegiance have shifted from your country to another country that have, that have capacity to do you good. So why won't they take it? They are largely unschooled. So what you're saying in essence is um, an intelligent fellow must have orchestrated this, knowing the implication that would um, in, under, under protests, so many persons would have done whatsoever. Mm. You understand? There are some videos you see that happen in other countries' protests. They will doctor it and manipulate it and put it out there. The idea is for it to incite people wow. more to carry on the fire. That's the idea. It's propaganda. So this one they are doing now is um, no country will sit there in his own country watch you fly another country's flag in your own country. No government will take that lightly. Okay? And that is why if you look at the tail end of the president's speech, having not addressed anything about the protest, he used metaphor at a paragraph before the last to talk about those who want to uh uh destroy the democracy they are hard end democracy <laughs> because it concerns him yeah he was referring to that flag <laughs> you understand but I couldn't say it expressly mm. and the truth is um people will keep doing that which will make the government irrelevant because the government itself started it by failing to address the issues you understand mm. um the way the president the president sounded like someone that made up his own mind mm. He sounded not like a president, but like a businessman whom people have conspired to bring down. And he now came out to tell them that, you know what, you cannot bring me down. All the things you are asking for, if I do them, I will come down. That's what, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. Before further revelation, I flying here and there. That's how it sounded. It sounded like someone who, if he does all this demand, if he accomplish all this demand, he will no longer be relevant. That's how it sounded. Thank you, Barista Philip. Now, yeah. over to you, Cyril Abako. The Cardinal State now, the Cardinal State government imposes 24 hour curfew. Even though the president it did not address, work, that curfew yeah. did not work. Even though the president didn't address the situation, does that leave the governor with no other choice than to handle the issue on the ground intelligently? And just to add to that, Cyril Abako, it appears that all, all the states that are having this um, fucker. Are not ABC states, Kaduna, mm -hmm. Joss, mm -hmm. um, River State, mm -hmm. Adama. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are all not. No, no. When the protest broke out, actually, it was tougher and stronger in the ABC states, frankly speaking. What the Kaduna is ABC. What the president has thought. Yeah, okay. Uh, what, 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 what I think the presidency had calculated or reckoned was that this would be a non-ABC affair. But you see, people don't know party when hunger is a problem. I uh, read what, what the president uh, said in his speech, maybe uh, later. But for now, the matter is that, in a manner of speaking, and I've people say this somehow, that the governors have a blame in what is going on, because they to receive allocation, mm -hmm. the rights that the president said was shared was shared through them, but are nothing brought to the people. So, you know, so if anything happened in their states, they also have the portion of the blame to take. But we know why a lot of emphasis is, is being placed on Abuja. Because of the system that you run, the president saw that the first political did, didn't go down. Then he took another one and gave to the governors again. It was sensibly because he knows that his own political program is, is, is on the governors. Otherwise, there are many other channels that they could have distributed by the people who are to the Nigerians. So the president cannot share, share, um, share the blame too quickly. But then the point is a government imposing coffee. When people's power, people is stronger than, than even the constitution. Papers power is stronger than the police, than the army. Papers power is the real power. So anything that makes people come together to assert themselves is is over and above any other thing. My view again on the flag that has been raised, we don't want the coup to happen. See how the president expressed his own fear in his speech. He said, "Now that we have been enjoying democratic government for 25 years, do not let enemies of democracy use you to promote an unconstitutional agenda." You see what that, you see that, mm -hmm. that will set us back on our democratic journey. So this is the president's own appeal. Because believe me, when protests linger this way for a long time, what happened in Bangladesh? It was not a coup. It was not a coup. Mm -hmm. And because I don't pray for a coup, we don't want to coup in this country. 
But when protest linger, so I think that somehow, if they apply this pressure for long enough, the president will be forced to make a second address where we make concessions. And that at least will be a great uh, achievement for the protest. Otherwise, if you leave things the way they are, we're not, we're not making any headway. But looking at what uh, Bath Evans did say, that he addressed it like a businessman. Do you think the concession? Do, do you do you think that concession would ever come from a businessman who is uh, very? Uh, I would love to use the word uh, shrewd in some sort. Do you think it's ever possible to have a concession in, in that particular matter? Concessions come because of their consequences. Let me tell you, in in Kenya, they didn't go to dissolve the cabinet except leaving the vice president and uh, Musala Mudavad. He had to do it. He he said he, he's he's entire cabinet room. They protest at the National Assembly, the Parliament of Kenya. The truth of the matter, look at the president suspended the minister that she should have fired, suspended her. Later on, she was using the ministry's letter to, 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 sign, to sign the documents and to send letters out. It means that there is no, if there are consequences, they will budge. I can tell you for a fact that if the president fears the worst, he will do what he says he should do. If he's not able to fear consequences, that's when you see them that they hold the high ground and talk back at you. Look at, for example, protests were about to happen. He didn't say anything. Protests and people, people that people, people were killed, he said they died. Then he said it was a political agenda. Then he blamed the rest of the protest. Clearly, because he felt he was he was he, 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 he was he was above water and he was he was he was safe on high ground. But if he knows that the, that the ground be, be, beneath him his feet can can shake, can quick, he will quickly make concessions. He will have to make because as I said, power in a democracy lies with the people. This is the reason we have to say again that the government imposing coffee in Kaduna is fine. But having coffee has been, uh, been, 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 been rubbish. If protesters can take over a, a police tank in Kaduna, if you see that from which you want, we listen. It is a matter of consequence. If he, if he sees that this thing is going to be, I, but I can tell that even in April, that's all right now, they are working on scenarios. Because they know that the president didn't, 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 didn't do didn't do there was coffee in just now. Ima yes, the, imagine, protests, the protest after the coffee. He took the, imagine him became, saying uh, we have rolled out this, we have rolled out something that nobody knows where we are we are we are we are rolled out. Nobody it, it, as some of them are here, I was only here because the president was, was saying it in his speech. I have never had any of those that there was a so you as a journalist. I, I'm not aware. You as a journalist don't know. I'm what about, aware. about the ordinary man on the streets? Because no point. Now, history is repetitive. Um, it's very important that leaders learn from history so they can avert um, issues in the future. Now, let's compare this to the Hasina issue in, in Bangladesh. It all started just very, very small. The, pres the Prime Minister would have addressed it, just like we had wished the President Bola Mechinibu to have addressed the issue, but he lingered. Just like the prime minister equally allowed out it all the time, it rolls snowballs no no yes. to something big. Yes. Now, do you think, knowing that history is repetitive, do you think we might have a situation like we just observed? The counter protesters, where are they in Nigeria? The anti protest protesters, where, 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 where last have you seen them? Maybe on day one, right? As at Sunday, no, as at Saturday. And the Abuja protest, we learned we took like five hours of people to come together. But then what happened? The days speed up like a lemon. Yesterday, this is what happened yesterday. It's, it goes to show you that they are they are playing with fire, actually. They are playing with fire because this thing can lead to anything. This thing can lead just anywhere. It can it can lead anywhere. It can it can go anywhere. It could. Government is showing clearly that. They are, they are, they rather circumvent the protests than deal with the issues. They would rather get people to, 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 to look away than to address their, their, their questions. And believe me, even if you brought protest, uh, uh, protest leaders, because the matters are organic, because their matter land cannot connect with them, the people who let them as well are they today, the Reno, Dua Lanko, we're not hearing about them now. It means that when people have anybody can, can, can lead any protest anywhere, I have friends who let them start protest to today that live in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And yet, look at where we are again. So, any, the fact that the issues remain, that is the main problem. That's the problem. Do you know how many policemen were chased away in uh, Port Harcourt yesterday? They pursued policemen to the point where they ran away, pulled their addresses, threw them away. Mm -hmm. 
So we are going to get to a point where the army and the police will join the protest. Yeah. Yes, that's what we are going As to. As was the case in Venezuela. Yes, that's what we are going to. Because this protest is actually for them. Okay. And many of them, their children are in the protest. But Barista Philly, looking at Lagos, because we are in the city of Lagos, the turnout for the protest is relatively low compared to other it's states. It's low because Lagos have been captured a long time ago. The instance protest happened by chance. Mm. It's a captured state. There's no democracy here. So don't use Lagos as a case study. Lagos is not a ground for that. Do you know that in Abuja, that uh, the president uh, lost during the election? Yes. Even Buhari lost the first and the second. Mm -hmm. He lost there. So we are looking at places like that for hope, not Lagos. Mm -hmm. We are looking at Port Harcourt, we are looking at Joss. Mm -hmm. We are look, uh, uh, Plateau, rather. we are looking at... Uh, Lagos is not... Mm -hmm. Lagos have an economic... Uh, if Lagos had had democracy, I believe Lagos would have developed more than this. Mm -hmm. But there's a template that has been used to capture Lagos. And that's the template that I've been taking to the center. Mm -hmm. And the protest, part of what the protest is saying is that that template mm -hmm. must not work at the center. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, even the anti-protesters, they were lodging in Lagos. Very true. If you notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were lodging in Lagos. I have one, one guy that does analysis like us who is heading the anti-protesters. <laughs> now, when you go and look at their lives and people that have assembled together, mm -hmm. That they are protesting against the protesters. You see how wretched they are. Mm. You understand? Because it's a captured state. When people have been captured economically and people are being given handouts to entrench the status quo, mm. you don't bother about them. Mm. You understand? As long as not the entire country mm. that is that way. You know? all, all right. So let, just before we wind up for today, let's uh, take a look at this from another uh, prism. Um, the crux of all of these things are as a result of weak political system, weak electoral system, which of course uh, gives rise to underdevelopment and leaders not being held accountable. Now, we can't say all of these things without mentioning the West. I guess that's the reason why uh, lots of people are calling for Russia and so on and so forth. Now, a very case scenario, Venezuela. Election just happened there. It was purported that the opposition won that particular vote. United States of America came up to say they denounced that election, that it was the opposition that won. Now, why is it difficult for the United States to equally play the same game for a country like Nigeria, knowing what happened February 25th, 2023? The American case in Nigeria is a matter of choice. They are not bound by any treaty. They don't have a stake. Is that what you're saying? They have a stake. Okay. A huge one. That's what I'm saying. I said their own influence in Nigeria is a matter of choice and maybe their own um, foreign policy, non-alignment, their own foreign policy and all that. It does not in any way mean that um, they are under any compulsion to come dictate or to come tell us the direction of things or what the, the way forward. The American government largely supported the Buhari government. Okay. They did that against the Jonathan government because they felt Jonathan was not firm enough. But at the end of the day, what happened? They were disappointed about the Buhari's government because it didn't lead Nigeria anywhere. It didn't make things, the, the whole, nothing came out from the government. Eight years. You understand? Now, the Tinobu's government, not like the opposite, they were largely indifferent. They were indifferent? Largely. <laughs> No, but the no. signs, but the signs showed no. that they were on the side no. of no. the see, current government. They were not. If you see the way they supported the Buhari's government, ah, the moment Buhari won the election, they invited him. He mm. went straight to see Obama. They, this one was not like that. The, I, I know the American. They they don't want to lose their holds on Nigeria. They don't want to lose their. But the Buhari's, uh, the Tinubu zone. The was on drag the American states so much with the California. Is it the California? Which result? I don't know the result. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago state. Uh, Chicago, <laughs> uh, state. That Chicago this state dragged the American government so much. So I don't know what, whether that was why. But I didn't see that visible. Unlike that of um, Wari, America, you know how many delegates came from the U.S. during the election 2015? 
were like they emptied their this into this place. Even some of the senators, uh, congressmen, you know, that I knew then that made a lot of impact were in Nigeria for an election. I didn't see that in this Tinubu zone. Maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't see that. I didn't, you were like indifferent about it. That's how I see it. If you say they supported uh, Tinubu, Tinubu said bid and all that to become president, well, maybe maybe you know more than I do in that area, but I didn't see that. So, um, uh, Tinubu's government is as, is as good as uh, he... He manages it. Uh -huh. The truth is that I don't see allies anywhere. People are not behind him as much. As much as uh, maybe the Lagos boys. And then uh, those who are feeding for whatever it is he's dishing out. Those who are around him, okay, have convinced him not to listen to the plight of the people. Or maybe by his own uh, volition, he has decided not to address the consequences are very clear. It's because leaders don't check around. They don't, they don't understand history sometimes. When people are asking, not one person, not two, not three, over 200 million people, and about half of them are asking by right, by law, take your government to this direction. And you say, no, all of them are wrong. That this is where you will stay. It has consequences. All right. Having consequences, finally, Cyril Abaku, just like Abbas Evans did say, allies are, are, are running away. Do we see a classical case of Mobutu Sesesiko in DRC in Nigeria? No, not necessarily. Um, I differ a little bit with, with the barrister on the issue of Western support. America has always given some sort of norm. I, I, I think that the president is a friend. You recall that when he took his stance on Niger, the vice president called him. The, That's Kamala Harris. Yes. Oh. Speak, spoke to him on the phone. I think in America was with me. I, I think that perhaps that would also have been a cover for him of some sort, saying that, look, when all this wind is blowing across your neighbors, but mm -hmm. never mind, America is with you. That sort of thing. I, 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 I did have that, um, that, that, that strong belief. Um, okay. Because again, the president has always, I mean, his, his work life, his school life has, was, was, was in America. So in the manner of speaking, he understands American stem well and he gets along with them. Um, he, he speaks a language that they, that they can understand. But coming back to the reason why America had this, that will have issues with Venezuela is because, you know, Maduro took her from Hugo Chavez. Mm -hmm. Hugo Chavez was a socialist person. Maduro came is also probably continuing where Chavez stopped. And America sees that as a serious regional threat, is an enemy of the state. And of course, the corruption, like we, we they have oil like we have mm -hmm. here too. And there's a lot of corruption in the other sector too. Mm -hmm. Corruption and the fact that Chavez, uh, the Maduro is an enemy of America. And look at the election that they held in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the election for the sake of the election. Mm -hmm. The man had already won before the election took place. Mm -hmm. So America cannot support that kind of open uh, 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 wound or such open rugby. But for the Nigerian case, we shouldn't look for an American or Russian solution. We should look for an internal solution, which I fear the current government is not, doesn't look willing to steer. So that does not leave us. That's a big question mark for the moment. Very, very true. A very big question mark. And uh, we sincerely hope that those in the ears of the president should do the needful, especially the media aides who are always there to uh, set uh, the narrative, uh, which of course the president uh, uh, works with. Uh, it's very important that we have a very great country, but that would only happen when we have a listening leader. Very Choma. true. And we hope that after having a listening leader, Nigerians' minds are changed because we are still our problem in one way or the other. <laughs> okay, moving on, let's say a very big thank you to Sir Lavaco and thank you, Barrister Philip, for your time with us this morning. My pleasure. Yes, so all right, uh, that's just about the size of our package today. We'd love to say thank you to you for always giving us your time when we do let them. But of course, uh, visit our website for more information at enterprisetvnews.com and also like, comment, and follow us on all our social media platforms at Enterprise TV7. I am Henry. And I'm Choma Okoya. On behalf of the entire team, we'd love to say thank you for watching and um, stay glued. Bye bye from us. Bye.
Enterprise TV, a tradition of 